Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Cheltenham Festival 2024, day two. That is March the 13th for those of you who are date aware. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. All right, day one's done, day two's coming. So this vid, very simply, the review of day one and the bets for day two. Day two uh, in total, uh, so day one was 40, day two is 40 total, 38 of it is Cheltenham, two pound of it is an extra horse at Kempton. So 38 Cheltenham, two pound Kempton, 40 pound total. Uh, it'll be similar, similar kind of configuration in terms of ratio singles to multiples and it's about 14 singles I think it is. Um, uh, roughly speaking, two thirds of the state going on the singles, a third on the multiples, five multiples, different multiples in terms of um, than what we had on day one. So for, for day two, we've got a win treble, we've got an each way double, two Yankees and the six fold acker. That's the plan. Now, before we get to that, let's go through the carnage of what happened on the channel on day one. Uh, how did, how did we start? Well, we started with we had a nice little combination. If we we're going to go boxing terminology, I had a nice little put a nice little combination together at the start of the round. Uh, then took a bit of a swerve, and then got laid out on the third race, and then I struggled to get back up again. That is the reality. Um, so yeah, it, it was all right on the first race. <laughs> got some money back. I thought that's a fair enough start, and then literally got nothing back all day. A new day one would be the hard day. Um, and uh, yeah, sure enough, it was. Now, I say it's a hard day. Lots of folk out there will, will have done all right. So if you're the favourite backers and stuff, you're all right. You, you, the favourites framed in every single race bar the first. So if you ignore Tully Hill in the first, which went off marginal favourite, the favourites made a framing spot in all the other races. Um, so, you know, it, it would be fairly easy if you avoided Tully Hill in the first to have got up the place pot. Those are people who like odds on horses. There were two of them and they won quite comfortably in the end. And then the rest of the odds were, were, were pretty short, to be honest. So uh, and it was only the, the horse in the boodles, which was, was even remotely a, a decent enough price. So people will have found all of those winners today. I'm not looking for the, the, the really short price winners. It's not what I'm about. So on a day like today, I'm going to lose. And lots of people will be like, well... You must be crap because because you, you've lost. Uh, Thursday, Friday is 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 where it's at for me. Uh, well, we have Tuesday two odds on winners and some shorties. Wednesday we'll get to that in a, in a sec, but three odds on horses. Um, so that's that's tricky in itself. Uh, but then Thursday, Friday, Friday's a couple of shorter ones. Nothing quite odds on yet now. Uh, and Thursday's the one where you've got really favourites are more two to one upwards. That's more more my kind of gig when you when you're trying to find some things. So, let me spin through what happened on the results. Uh, so, first race on day one, Tully Hill was the disappointment. Slade Steel was the backup, uh, and that went in and won. It was seven to two, I think, in the end. Uh, Rachel Blackmore ran a great race, and then Asian Master got backed into sixteens uh, and fourth place, which paid out for uh, was it Paddy Betfair Betfred. Betway, I think, something like that. Four, four major bookies. So I know not everyone will have even got that back. Uh, so it was first and fourth in that first race. Uh, so it, it, it was a nice enough start. Then we get to the Arkle. Gaelic Warrior was the obvious favourite. But won like an absolute good thing. That really did. That was a cracking performance. Found a 50 was the next best, despite drifting. Um, which I'm quite surprised about. Points, you got 10 to 1 um, in the daytime. And then Matata was the price at double figures um, to perform well, but was only fourth. So if you were Sky Bet, you got paid out on that one. No one else did, not recording it for the statistics on that. So in those first couple of races, 16s was the, was the only horse um, it, from, a, from a double figure price getting framed. Um, and, or, or well, those two were the two horses. So... Those first two races were right, and I, and I made a point in the in the review in the comments, and I know <laughs> I know it's got picked up. Uh, I said there wasn't very many big price horses in the frame on uh, Tuesday. Now, what I mean by that is, and maybe it was a bit slop, sloppy language, there were twenty eight framing horses, 
16 of them were single figures, 12 were double prices. Given the context of how many double price horses, 12 um, isn't actually very many. I would expect there to be more of those on Thursday and Friday, certainly. Um, and yeah, I don't know, maybe Wednesday is a bit hard to tell, but Thursday, Friday, I'd expect there'll be more of them. So that that was one thing. And then actually trying to string those together. So if you only got 12, 12 bigger prices, trying to find any form lines to go through, I think was pretty hard luck. So if if anybody um, goes for big prices and you manage to pull off a, a win on uh, on the first day, then fair play to you. Um, okay, then we got to the Ultima. That was the only one, to be honest, when the ground got really heavy, I was a little bit vulnerable, I felt, on my selections. It was only really Lord de Manil who, who was probably okay on the ground but didn't run great um so four horses four pulled up i think we had what 21 runners in the end only eight finished and i couldn't get anything they all pulled up um so that was a real a real painful result um i mean looking at the results itself on that one i think i've gone back through and there was there was a few shorties in the frame i think it was three three shorties and three double figures but even the first two didn't have any proven form on the ground so I know Chianti Classico was a well-fancied horse and it was well-backed in, but if you were just purely looking at trying to find horses that were going to go on that tougher ground, you wouldn't have picked it on the ground. You would have picked it on form. And then Twig, similarly, nothing to, to write home about anywhere near, near that ground. So they, I think they were hard to come by if you were tracking ground. So depending on, on what you lean on in terms of form read, I think it was quite tricky. Um champion hurdle not so sleepy sadly was a right disappointment um yeah it wasn't wasn't anywhere near Zarek the brave was one out of the placings um so yeah the horse to be on there obviously um state man won irish point was second so the market had it absolutely right but then lucia i mean henderson had an awful day six horses five pulled up but lucia absolutely overdid itself so there's the odd horse for henderson popping up but i will not touch henderson horses on wednesday not after tuesday's results um so, yes, out of the Brave was, was a credible fourth. So one out of the placings on that one. And in the Mares, uh, Love Envoy looked like it was going to get placed and then faded. Um, Lossy Mouth was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I really underestimated Lossy Mouth, to be honest. I'll have my hands up on that one. Um, and then De Bromhead uh, won the first race, then had second, third and fourth in the Mares. So great result for him. Um, Marie's Rock, uh, no good. Henson Horse pulled up. And then the Boodles are a bit unfortunate because Palamon wasn't really into the race yet and got hampered by a faller and got pulled up. So it wasn't a performance that was a problem necessarily because we never really found out. Eagle Fang was a bit of a disappointment, that would have to be said. So that was down the field. So yeah, that, that was the uh, the singles. Um, so spin through this quite quickly. Disappointment, second and first. Um, so that was, you know, it's one of them ones. Could have put Slade still in there, could have done, but didn't. Uh, I mean, that was an absolute write-off, really. So we had the two two odds-on horses in there. The other four, um, no good. So that was that. Uh, the Yankee of the day, one out of the placings, uh, two out of the placings, and poor. And then here, poor, one out of the placings, uh, and pulled up uh, when hampered. So no good on that one. And then the combination double, as we uh, know, five out of six pulled up. So um, that was that. What do we know then? What do we know for day two? So we said we're going to avoid uh, Henderson, definitely. So he still might have a couple that might frame. He's got a lot of horses, but we're going to avoid him. Um, De Bromhead had some good results and some less ones, like uh, Calixios was a poor performer. But I wasn't a keen on that horse anyway, but... Uh, De Bromhead generally looks like he, you know he's he's come to the boil at the right time. Rachel Blackmore looks like she's riding well, so those are horses to keep an eye on. Uh, Skeletons weren't involved at all on Tuesday. They've got three runners on Wednesday, and you'll see as I go through the staking plan, I'm going for two out of three of the skeleton horses. I'm leaving out Langadan. I can't I can't be back in Langadan. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> just yeah, a, ho a horse just pops up like once a year. But not not a single figure price, no, not for me. Um, it, it could absolutely win the race, but not for me. Um, so Skelton's there. Um, I, I mean, Elliot didn't didn't uh, get the results per se in terms of, of of a win point of view. But Jack Kennedy, if you backed the Jack Kennedy five horses 
riding for Elliot and he did them in a place fivefold, you'd have come out with a with a result on that one. So uh, Jack got all five of his horses placed riding for Gordon and his sixth ride, which was Henry de Bromhead, was one out of the placings in the Mayor's Hurdle. So he almost got a place sixfold if you just purely follow Jack Kennedy. That is not necessarily what I'm going to be doing on um, Wednesday, but, you know, lightning could strike try it twice. Um, and the ground definitely is on the heavier side, albeit, um, it, it, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, eight, eight horses finished in the Ultima. That, that's, that's a lot of horses pulling up and not finishing. Um, but like I said, there wasn't, I suppose the horses at the front end, they were unproven on heavy rather than it wasn't their preferred, preferred service. They didn't have actually a lot of form to go on about had they ever ridden on it, as opposed to a horse, I don't know, like the National Hunt Chase. I said on the video yesterday, wouldn't have touched Salvador Ziggy, drifted like an absolute barge. Um, and yeah, what, what ground, that was a ground issue. Um, so I'm generally going to be leaning on horses that are on the soft and heavy side. If there's a horse that likes good going, it's pro it's not going to run anyway, to be honest. Um, and you tend to find in the championship races, the, the best horses will out anyway. So championship races for Wednesday, you've got three big odds on favourites. So that's a challenging day in itself. So three big odds on favourites. Two of them are eight runner races. So it gives you some potential to look for second and third places. The Coral Cup's got a massive field um, and hasn't historically been a brilliant race for me. So I'm just going easy on that one. And you've got the cross country, which most bookies are paying, well, I'd say most bookies, quite a few bookies paying for. Um, but I couldn't find an each way angle. I think the top of the four in the market looked like the right four. So I wasn't going to play each way in that race. The bumper, I think it's about eight major bookies paying five. That gives you a little bit more of an opportunity on bumper. Often the bumper, you only get four places because there's not really a shorty in there. They've, they've given you five. So I think it's going to be a day where it's hard to make big money on Wednesday. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm not saying I'm aiming to break even, but Tuesday was tough. Wednesday is is a day where if we get the money back, I'll be fine with that. And then we go, we'll, we'll try our best on Thursday, Friday, to take advantage of the, the likelihood of bigger price winners. That's where I'm looking at it. So there we go. Oh, I've, I'm going to get a complaint. I mean, yesterday it was 11 minutes. Today's 12 minutes preamble. Here we go. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll refund you the price of the channel. Um, day two, <laughs> bear in mind, these are all optional, right? I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm on a shocker of a week so far, aren't I? But we'll, we'll, we're, we're cracking on. This is what I've done in the name of the channel. You don't have to copy it at all. You can just watch in the sidelines and laugh. There's a few people that do that anyway. All right. one thirty. Where you, whether you're going to call it the, the Ballymore, the Bering Bingham or the Gallagher Novice Hurdle, it's the first race of day two and it's two and a bit, well, two and a half and a bit mile uh, hurdle. Um, so Ballyburn looks it looks like the best horse given the way that the Supreme turned out it's made the form look even better you'd think it's going to be winning but I'm not going to lump loads of money on a single bet on Ballyburn what I do think is the market has it right and therefore pretty solid bet today do Il, Il, Il Atlantique and Predators Gold they for me look like the horses that we should become in second and third that's what the market says Mullins dominates the field, so he could spring a surprise in there. But I'm just going to go with the fairly solid options in there. So Il, At Il Atlantique and Predator's Gold, both a pound each way. And if something goes wrong with, with uh, Ballyburn, could pop up with a win. Uh, Brown Advisory. Um, factor File, again, looks like a pretty solid horse. Too short for me for a single bet. The horse that I do like at a price, so this one I'm not following the market precisely, going to go with Elliot's horse American Mike 12 to 1 um, it's not necessarily going to be there on ratings but I think it's got a progressive enough profile um, and I'm, I'm thinking the ground's going to be in its favour so we're going American Mike a pound each way at 12s well say 12s I'll be taking SPs uh, for channel stats the Coral Cup I'm only going with two that doesn't mean I'm really strong necessarily on it I didn't want to split loads of money across the Coral Cup um, Mai Tai is a horse I backed last year at a short enough price um, and it placed in the Martin Pipe twice the price at the moment for the Coral Cup off a similar-ish mark um, so for me it'll, it'll have been laid out to, to run a race here um, and yeah I'm, I'm going to stick face with, with Mai Tai at 14s 
and then the one I've gone for a price I know yesterday I talked about Elliot and Danny Gilligan I've not gone Danny Gilligan's horse I've gone on the Cohen horse uh, Maxim um, it won penultimate on the penultimate start it's not really got the profile particularly that you'd necessarily want to go for and it's dropping down in trip but I'm thinking the combination of dropping down in trip with the heavy going um, might suit this horse so I think it's, it's a good enough price and I think it's only that price because of kind of jockey booking so maximum at 40 to 1 one pound each way is my other selection in the coral cup okay let's move on champion chase all right champion chase al fabiolo again is the third of the odds on trio looks like a solid john bond second favorite i'm saying i'm not touching henderson horses edward stone is a really good looking each way bet again from a price point of view it's not massive seven to one if it gets placed you're going to come back with a small profit it feels like the solid option to do. I didn't like anything at the, at the bigger prices, really. Um, you, you can look at things like Captain Guinness. It came second last year, and Rachel has said running running well. Um, but we're just going to go go straight forward. Edward Stone, one pound each way. In the Glen Farkles, that's probably the race I like least uh, in terms of a betting point of view. I, it's really hard, I think, to tell between Delta Work, Coco Beach, Manila Indo, and Galvin. And I didn't like anything at a price, so I'm just going to go again. What I think is a safe, the safer option, Delta Work, Cocoa Beach, uh, both pound fifty win singles. And then the Grand Annual, um, two against the field in that one. Solness I like, I've backed it before at nice prices. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm good for that uh, 18 to £1 each way. And then we're going on the Skeleton Horse, um, Unexpected Party. I think it's probably one of them ones that I think you could get a bit of a run on it because it's a skeleton horse, particularly if Langer Dan runs well in the Coral Cup. I think that horse might go off shorter, but it's. It, it, I mean, 12 is, is, is a good price. The channel will just take SP and we'll roll with it. But um, yeah, de definitely one I think where if you're putting it on and you're getting bog, that would be a helpful thing. Unexpected party, uh, a pound each way. So that is the grand annual. Hang on. There we go. Right, champion bumper. Interesting race. There's nothing really stand out in terms of from a market point of view, so it leaves it quite open. So I've gone three against the field um, for five places. So just for a win bet, because the price is a bit short, uh, Jalon Duderi, I wanted to keep on side at 13 to 2, um, because I think it's it's potentially going to go on to do better things. And so it's, it's you know, it's a quality horse, I think. Um, you ought to know is is slightly my favourite horse to be honest at 11 to 1 one pound each way um, that I think it should be a shorter price for the race and then Royal Infantry the skeleton horse um, he does not run very many horses in the bumper the last one I forget what its name was it was a couple of years ago and it did frame I think it framed I think I see my memory feel free to correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure it framed the last time he sent out one in a bumper uh, I think the time before that, he actually had the favourite of the champion bumper and it, it was well down the field, but last time it framed. Um, yeah, and I think of, of the of the non-Irish horses, um, it, it looks to be the, the, probably the best one. So Royal Infantry, 28 to 1, a pound each way. That is the single bets for you. Then we're into the five accumulators. Accumulator 1, six fold of the day. This will be the shortest one of the week. So Thursday, Friday's versions of this will be, will be bigger priced, but... I wanted to keep it tight on um, on Wednesday. So one thirty, biggest price of the bet, Predators Gold at 10s. 2.10, we're going to go Factor File, 4 to 5. 2.50, uh, Build by Ballymore. 3.30, Edward Stone. 4.10, Delta Work. 4.40, Liberty Hunter. So you'll see in the handicaps there, I've gone for much shorter, short prices in there. Um, you know, they're, they're not all that we'd be backing on singles, but for the purpose of this bet... Um, and try and keep it tight and, and try and get some money back then uh, then that, I'm just going to go with that 50p each way sixfold um, basically those two horses in those handicaps that were in singles are the two horses I would make the favourites of those races then <laughs> this first bet here this does not take a lot of imagination does it right so this is really the most popular bet all day long I should imagine from an accumulator point of view but those favourites are really strong favourites. Um, so I want to have a little bit of cover if all three go in. If two go in and one doesn't, then hopefully something else in the staking plan that I've got to, to go after it will pop up instead. That's the plan here. 
Um, but on, on a day like to, uh, Tuesday, when the odds on favourites win, we'll, we'll try and keep them on side. So Ballyburn in the 130, Factor Fire in the 210, Al Fabiola the 330, £3 pound win treble. I mean, probably going to get about a 10 return on that, depending on how the prices go, if it, if it comes in. But it will be the most popular accumulator all day long. Um, so, and I, you know, yeah, we, we're covering ourselves. That's what I'm aiming to do. So, yeah, if they all win, we've got a bit back there. If two win, hopefully I've got the horse that comes in instead of it. Uh, each way double. I know this looks a bit unusual, um, but those two just look really solid to me at nice enough prices. And again, I'm trying to keep it a little bit tighter on Wednesday. So 130 Predators Gold at 10s, 3.30 Edward Stone 7s. It's a 60p each way double. You're not going to get you know loads of pounds back for it. But again, it's just trying to put a bit more money back in the coffers on that one. So that is the uh, the two probably less exciting uh, combination bets before I get to two Yankees. So here is Yankee number one. Uh, oh, hang on, there we go. Uh, Yankee number one, 130 Il Atlantique, sixes, 250 Mai Tai, 330 Edward Stone, 450 Solness. That is Yankee number one, 20p each way. Second Yankee, slightly bigger prices overall, 130 Predators Gold, 250 Maxim, 450 Unexpected Party, 12s, 530 You Water No. Um, just from a placings point of view, should flag as well the 250 Coral Cup. Most big bookies are six. Sky are stand out at eight places on that one, so keep an eye on that. 450, most bookies are five. Sky are stand out with six places. All right, that is £38 of Cheltenham. And then one extra horse running at Kempton, which is my horse of the day. So horse of the day at non-Cheltenham. Extra bet, 730 Kempton. If all of Cheltenham's gone down, we can still get our money back on logistical in the uh, 730 Kempton, 33 to one, a pound each way. Point of clarification here. I am taking the price as I would do at non-Cheltenham bets for the channel. All Cheltenham stuff, SP. This one, I'm saying 33s. We're taking the price on that one. Um, so at the time of making this video, you, you've still got about six or seven bookies that were offering 33s. Few, most others are 28s. But 33 is what we've got for the channel. Four places in the 7.30 at Kempton. Good betting heat. Really short favourite um, for, a, for a, whole, a race with that many runners. And logistical is very, very much overpriced. So that's why it is horse of the day. I didn't want to complicate it and put in any multiples with Cheltenham. If you want to move that stuff around, you move stuff around. But I wanted to keep Cheltenham separate. But this is our, our kind of get logistical going, go and win the race. We get all the money back. Um, simple as that, isn't it? All right, that's me. Um, the last thing I just want to say is, is thank you for all the support on the first video. Um, I know it went went pear shaped uh, after after race one, um, and yeah, I really appreciate all the lovely comments and enthusiasm. I know not every comment was lovely, but on a terrible day, what do you expect? I'm, you know, people are going to mock or you know, vent frustration. That's kind of that's the gig in it. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate everybody who who um, who made a lovely comment. Put a like in there. All the extra subscribers. A bunch more people subscribed. I'm sorry that I haven't given you much to subscribe for yet. But everything I'm doing on here is free. And you make your choices. You take it or leave it. I'll give you the case for why I've, I've picked a horse or how I've made the bets. Then you make your decisions about whether or not you're remotely interested in doing anything that I've done. There's no obligation here, folks. This is what I'm doing. My £40 is going on there. As I always say to you, that is only a... A, a smidgen of what I'm actually doing in, in totality. If I actually went through everything I put on for day one, for instance, uh, I mean, this video would be hours long. Um, so yeah, I try and put it together, a staking plan, which I think best is the best version of what I can do in a in a in a, in a kind of roundup way. Um, so yeah, a, outside of that, there'll be other horses I'll probably be back in a little bit um, and different combinations, all sorts of things like that. Um, but that what I'm trying to put out there is my best version. Didn't go well on Tuesday. Let's see if we can get a much better return on Wednesday and see if we're still in the fight at the halfway stage because round one firmly went to the bookies for, from, from the fight with me. Um, let's see how we get on on round two. Thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow night. It'll be an earlier upload, aiming to upload maybe about nine o'clock tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Cheerio.